Uh, today's lecture is about uh, operations on multiple random variables. Uh, we have already covered uh, single random variables and then operations on random variables. Now we, that we have just finished multiple random variables, we'll go on to operations of multiple random variables. Here is a list of the topics that we are going to cover uh, under operations of multiple random on, on multiple random variables. We will start with the reviewing what we did with single random variable, and then we'll go on to expected value of a function of random variable, joint characteristic function, joint Gaussian random variable, transformation of multiple random variables, linear transformation of Gaussian random variables, and then we'll have sampling and uh, some limit theorem. So basically, the new word here is uh, uh, operations on multiple random variables. We will start, as I said, with a quick review of what we did with operations on a single random variable. That will be the basics for uh, introducing operations on multiple random variables. We looked at uh, we looked at the expected value x bar of um, a random variable. It's uh, we looked at the continuous uh, formula and the discrete example. Then we looked at the moment. Again, we define the, the central moment. We gave the formula for that it's continuous and discrete. We looked at the central moment. So in the central moment, you can see that we are subtracting the average. If you recall, we call these M's and the central moments were called uh, mu's. And now we looked at the characteristic function. We define the characteristic function, we define the moment generating function, and then we show that we can use these to find the moments. Uh, and we looked at the functions of random variables. So basically, we looked at if you have transformation, whether this transformation is monotonic or multi or non monotonic, if you like. So uh, this is how we do the transformation given. The original BDF, you get the transformed BDF. For the case of non monotonic, we have the summation there. Now, uh, for the expected value of function of random variables, we have multiple random variables now. Uh, we define it in the same way. So, if you want the expected value of g of x, okay, then what you do, you integrate over the joint BDF. This used to be g of x, now we have g of x and y. Okay, if you have a special case where you define, uh, where you just want a function of one of the random variables, you can still use a joint function. Okay, you can still use a joint function, but what happens with the first integration, you can order the integration correctly, and then this, this is going to marginalize the y, so we get f of x, and we are back to the single random variable example. So we can think of the expected value of a function of multiple random variables, as the generalization of a single random variable. We can even generalize to more than two random variables. Just like we see here, there is nothing new here, but we are going to have x1, x2 up to xn. In the same way, we have multiple integrations. Now, a special case of function of random variables, a very important special case. What if we want to find the expected value of a weighted sum? of the random variables. For example, I want to find uh, 5, let's say 5x1, uh, 5x1 plus um, 2x2 minus 3x3. I want to find the expected value of this weighted sum. We will find out that the expected value will be the sum of the weighted expectation, like you can see in this important formula. The expectation can go inside and that makes sense because the expectation is a linear operation if we want to do the formal proof we are defining a g of x here as a weighted sum this weight in general is alpha alpha i and this is the expected value of a function of random variables now uh, if you want to find if you want to substitute specifically for the example that we have here we'll take this inside Okay, and then we can say the expected value of g of x is the expected value of the sum of weighted functions. We, we remove this now and we substitute the weights. 
Now for every one element in this summation, of course we go from here to here by rearranging the expectation with the summation and integration. For a given n, for just one of these summations, you will find out that you can marginalize the other variables and you get the expected value of uh, xi weighted. If you apply the summation, we get the original formula. Okay, so we can summarize that the expected value of a sum of weighted functions is equal to the weighted sum of the expected values of the individual functions. That's to say, just take the summation inside or take the expectation inside, sorry. Joint moments about the origin. Uh, we can define the joint moments about the origin as the expected value of e x raised to the power n times y raised to the power k. Uh, what we did before is that the expected value, we, we just looked at the expected value of x raised to the power n because we had one variable. Now, because we have two variables, it, it's going to be a, the expected value of x raised to the power n, y raised to the power k. Why n and k? Because we can have different orders or for or different power for the different variables. The formula is uh, very much the same. And now we can define m. We have two subscripts now for the moments. m n0 is basically the expected value of x raised to the power n, y raised to the power 0. So whenever the second subscript is 0, it's a marginalized, if you, if you like, a moment. All right? If you make this first subscript 0, then x will vanish and we get expected value of y raised to the power k. The order of the moment now equals to the sum of k and n, the sum of the two exponents. Okay, so we can say that the second, if I say a second order moment, then there are three possibilities because 2, 0, 0, 2, and 1, 1, all of them added up to, add up to 2. These are all called second order moments. Okay, for the first order moment, we have two of them, m0, 1, and m1, 0, and that will give you the average. For, um, if we define the coordinate x bar, y bar, that's called the center of gravity. So if you have distribution, these are the kind of average in two dimension, which is the centroid or the center of gravity for this scenario. Okay, uh, we have been talking about two variables here. We can generalize to more than two variables. We can say m3, 2, 5, for example. Uh, then if we have three variables, it's going to be x1, x2, or 3. I have colored these things for you to follow up. So this is in sequence x1 goes with the first exponent, subscript, x2 and y, uh, and or x3 is raised to the power 5. Now we come to very important joint uh, characteristics, if you like, correlation, dependence, and orthogonality. Okay, so the second moment, m11, which is equal to the expected value of the product of the two is called the correlation. If you want to correlate two variables, you basically multiply them and find the expectation of this multiplication. Correlation has big significant or, or physical meaning. Now, uh, if you want to apply this to a continuous variable, the Rxx, we're giving it a special name. So it's M11 because the correlation is widely used. We are dedicating the use of letter R here, okay? R now is nothing but the correlation. The subscript is Rxy, which means uh, we are correlating x and y. So you're taking x raised to the power 1, y raised to the power 1. This is very important, as I said, because it tells you whether two variables are correlated or uncorrelated. If Rxy or M11, if the expected value of the product equal to the product of the expected values, this is called uncorrelated random variables. We're called uncorrelated. Now, remember that dependence is different than uncorrelation. But if the two variables are independent, then they are automatically uh, uncorrelated. The opposite is not necessarily true. So we can say that independence is a very strong condition compared with uncorrelation. Being uncorrelated does not guarantee being independent. Remember that the condition for um, being uncorrelated is basically 
this. It's that the joint PDF equal to the product of the PDF themselves, of the marginal PDFs. But the required condition for correlation is much simpler than that. It's basically, uh, you just need the product of the expectation, the joint expectation and the product and the marginal expectation. This is more than that. This is the entire PDF. Okay? So independence guarantees uncorrelation, but uncorrelation does not guarantees independence. Okay? So if you know that the PDF are, are independent, then this is automatically guarantees to you that uh, the expected value of the product will, will equal to the individual uh, expectation multiplied by each other. Okay, for the case of Gaussian, if your random variable is Gaussian, then we can say that if they are uncorrelated, they are independent. Only for the case of Gaussian. We cannot generalize. Huh? Uh, this is just a special case. Okay. We talked about uncorrelated or correlated. We talked about independence. Now, we say that two random variables are orthogonal if the expected value of the product equal to zero. So if it's equal to zero, they are orthogonal. If it's equal to the multiplication of the expectation, it's called uncorrelated. Three different things. Okay. In this slide, we're just showing you that uh, if we're just trying to prove that if the variables are independent, then this is automatically will guarantee that they are uncorrelated. We start with the uncorrelation definition, that uh, with the correlation definition. So the two variables here are the expected value of the product, which is the correlation, Okay, is defined to be x, y times the joint function. If they are independent, then we can go from here to here. If they are independent, which means we can separate the joint function as a product of the marginals. Now, uh, once we separate, we can have two different integration. And each one, of, each one of them is defined to be the expected value. So I'm just tying the colors. The green goes with the green, the blue with the blue. So only using the assumption of being independent, we have shown that it has to be uncorrelated. Okay, so let's do an example about orthogonality and correlation. The expected value of um, x equal to 3, the expected value of x squared equal to 11, y equal to minus x, 6x plus 22, and then we're saying find the expected value of y. Finding the expected value of y is just, um, will be a straightforward operation, um, and it's going to be taking the expectation of the entire thing here, the expected value of y, right, minus 6, x plus 22. And then now, of course, we can take the expectation inside, like we did here. The answer is minus 6 times uh, 3, minus 18 plus 22, which is going to be 4. And the second question says, are x and y orthogonal? Are they correlated? So basically, it says, find as if it says find the expected value of x, y. If you do that, we we're saying that the expected value of x, y, the correlation. Okay, so this is x and this is y, right? By definition. We open the bracket, we simplify, we got minus 6 expected value of x squared. And these are given in the question. So by direct substitution, the answer tends to be 0. So what do you conclude? Okay, we conclude the following. Since the answer equal to zero, it's orthogonal. And also we can see that this is, does not equal to the expected value of x times y. So we can say they are correlated. Huh? So the expected value of xy does not equal to three times four, which is 12, because it turned out to be zero here. So they are correlated, they are not uncorrelated. Okay, now let's have a generalized linear example. Let's say that y is defined to be ax plus b. We're not going to, the previous example I did was a specific number six minus six and so on. But now let's do it in general. So the expected value of xy 
okay this is x and this is y by definition okay this is y so we're substituting here for y if we simplify open the bracket we got the following expectation so we are saying if you multiply the individual expectation you get expected value of x times the expected value of y so these two are not the same if they are equal we can say then correlate they are correlated uncorrelated if we force this to be zero we say they are orthogonal so we can state this by saying if a equal to zero okay if a equal to zero then these two expressions become the same so if a equal to zero we can guarantee they are uncorrelated which means if y is just a constant of course they're going to be uncorrelated now if you want them to be orthogonal then this expression must equal to zero which means that a expected value of x squared should equal to minus b expected value of x right and if we solve for b over a we get the following expression if we solve for a, b over a we get b over a should equal to the following expression if this is the case then they are orthogonal like the example we had before now so expected value of x does not equal to zero if x if if, if that's the case we will not be able to define to de to define okay so if uh, for this to be true the expected value of x is not equal to zero if x if the expected value equal to zero can, then we cannot have orthogonal because we'll be defining um, will be violating the definition here of course the case of a equal to zero is not very important because b y, y equal to b is not is a, is a trivial example now let's do this in class practice the joint pdf of a bivariate random variable x is given as the following function where k is constant find the value of k are x and y independent show your steps then finally find the probability that x plus y is less than 1 please write your answers down in the comments thank you